Okay, I started spooling this and I, I think I should get it on video. So here we go. There's no, there's no set rule. It's just whatever looks good. Uh, I'm not going to maximize it for a biface or anything. I'm just going to spall pieces off. Hopefully I'm not distracted by the video. Okay, it's it's very difficult to know where to spall because there's a lot of cracks and stuff. But some of you guys ask me many times to uh, spall stuff that's difficult. So here we go. I just uh, take whatever might be useful. There's a lot of cracks in it. All right, let's see. I'm not going to try to maximize this for a biface in case I haven't said that already. It's a holiday weekend, and people are making noises, but oh well. Most of this stuff anyway is uh, go only going to be used for small arrowheads. When you get stuff like this, don't be too worried about getting big pieces for big bifaces. It'll drive you nuts. And if you're too ambitious, you'll end up with nothing. It's better to end up with a bunch of small stuff than end up with nothing. So yeah, this is one of the hardest things in flint napping. So I might zone out from time to time. Because I'm thinking. one of those exceptions where you really can't think too much you gotta look at the, the whole thing take it all in see where you can 
remove useful flakes. Everyone's going to have a different method. Uh, for this piece here, you can already see what you might want to do, but it's, it might not be what I'm going to do. Last weekend I was spalling something big and one of the guys mentioned that he would not ever think of spalling it the way I did because he didn't realize the flakes would come off in the way that they did. So just uh, try to get used to how the flakes will come off. Try to remember. Yeah, some of these are curved, so I can't use the whole thing, but I can. I can try to maximize the, the potential of those curved flakes. It's pretty typical. Uh, pretty typical for me to work with curved flakes. And if you're used to working curved glass from bottle bottoms and stuff, it shouldn't be an issue. Yep. Flakes will come off better when you've got a lot of mass. They start getting more difficult as you get into it. And you might not capture the last bit. See how it breaks before it gets to the end? That's pretty common. With obsidian also. I know it's kind of heartbreaking to see the the last quarter of it break off. Look at that yellow ochre. Yeah, it's heartbreaking to see the last bit break off, but you just got to live with it. Happens to everybody, I think. You can do this with a bopper, but the swiping billet, I think, works a lot better. Nice little hole in that one. I never had a never have a chance to nap all those holy flakes I got a bunch of them but I never keep them all in one place I just throw them in with the rest of them I should probably start keeping them all in one place A 
lot of what I do is pretty dicey because I don't know how strong it is in the middle. Sometimes it'll snap in half because I'm hitting on the end and the middle's weak, but you never know. Yeah, one of the tricks is to end up with a core that actually looks like something you can use instead of a clunky chunk. You know, try not to whittle your core down to a little chunk. I guess it's part of maximizing it for a biface, but it's probably not going to be one with all this chunk in the middle. <clears throat> That's a good chunk. That's a good flake. What did it do? It's got a layer in it. Yeah. Uh, this is probably junk, but it goes in the box anyway. And this is, uh, that's not too bad, I suppose. Yeah, okay. All right, so we're going to do the same thing with this obsidian. No set rule, except i got to protect my feet. Hold on. Yeah, some of you guys wear these big old tall work boots all the time. I don't like wearing those tall work boots because they get all sweaty and then I, I can't throw them out when they start to get all stinky. With these kind of shoes that I got right now, these sneakers, these generic $20 sneakers or whatever they are, I can just throw them out when they get smelly. I don't want to spend a hundred and some odd dollars on the tall, tall leather boots, you know what I mean? But if I had them on, I wouldn't have to worry about putting the gaiters on. All right, anyway, let's see. How do you maximize this? There's no set rule, just try to... I'm gonna try to do the best I can. It's best to hit on a, on a side that has the correct angle to it hit into this way and remove that way like was already done and it, you lose the bottom quarter yeah pretty typical there are other ways to do it I don't like any of the angles on here except this one here but uh, I don't know let's see I need a separate box for these. Let's see. I don't have one available. I'll just pick them up later. All right. Let's see, I lost the bottom part. All right, yeah. Is it triple flow? I think it is. It's got some clear. You see that right there? Okay. 
I'm just going to hit where it has good platform areas and rough it up on the smooth faces. I could spend all day roughing these areas up, but just a little bit would be okay. How can I get big long flakes? How can these guys get big long flakes from these things? It's very, very difficult. Well, some might say just get a leg pad and do it like this and hit it with a bopper like this. I get the same issue. I lose the last quarter or the last third, no matter what I do. Okay. That one, I lost the first quarter. take it from this side that might actually be better it's rougher right here that's the only reason because it's rougher and it can grab the edge a little bit better yeah theoretically that just smashed everything And it's not because of the layers in the obsidian, it's just because the, for some reason, the surface, the contact with the surface was erratic or something happened and it didn't contact the platform very well, so everything shattered. So I guess it's best to hit on a previously flaked surface, I suppose. There's a crack in this. How about hitting that way? Yeah, I could hit that way. I don't know. It's triple flow. It's got black, it's got red, and it's got clear or smoky. That's triple flow. It looks like a nice flake from this side. It's got a lot of percussion fissures in it, whatever they call those. That's from hitting it really hard, but you don't have much choice on this. How do you keep them from breaking? You don't. It's just luck. There's no technique to keep those from, from breaking. And support. I've never found a, a support technique that'll keep them from breaking. Now, I could be wrong, right? But I've been doing this for a long time. And 
I haven't found a good way to keep those from breaking other than using indirect percussion with a vertical punch. Why don't I use indirect percussion with a vertical punch? Because it gives me very narrow blades. I don't want narrow. I'd rather have fat and short or wide and short than long and narrow. I don't, I don't like dealing with long narrow flakes. They snap in half. So if they're going to snap in half while you're napping, what good does it do you? Those little shorter, fatter flakes don't snap in half while you're napping them. It's best to get something than to get nothing. There. I suppose thin and curved will preserve the entire length. Still going to lose length off the ends because it's curved. They're curved, they might preserve all the way down. That's the other thing. You know, you can preserve them all the way down, but they'll be curved, so you gotta lose some off the ends anyway. That one was weird. Yeah, hitting on the original surface seems to be not too good of an idea. I want to try to get rid of that turtle back so I can preserve this. Oh, come on. Okay, this next stage is critical, so I don't want no distractions. I've got these chips everywhere, biting into me from the underside. I don't see any good areas. Yeah, a little bit too much, but oh well.
Okay, I can do something with that. Could I have ended up with a bigger biface if I had just focused on only the biface? Yeah, if that's all you want. Then you get a bunch of shatter and you only end up with one biface from that whole spall. And then if you break that biface, you got nothing. So I'd rather have a bunch of a bunch of usable flakes and a small biface than no usable flakes and one biface. Of course you can't say I mean I can't say there won't be any usable but they'll be small but if that's what you want just little bitty flakes and then one big biface then go to town on it yeah This is a level of up type point. You hit it from the side like this, it'll follow the ridge down that way. It, it, it makes it flatter. It's not totally flat, but that's that's how you make the level of up points. You don't hit it from this way. You know what I'm saying? I didn't hit it starting here and going down this ridge. I hit it from the side like this. And it went that way, just for reference. Just FYI. You'll see in the, there's a an animation on Levalois Leval and how to make a Levalois point like this. And they have you, or have the, illustration impact point here going this way but that's not it it always is it's supposed to be from the side like this okay reaching my the end of my ability to thin this further without losing a lot of width yeah yeah it's ready for indirect percussion okay so that's it that's my little spalling for the day I am going to do some more spalling but it's pretty boring because it's mainly testing And I gotta do it fast. I don't wanna be worried about the camera. Okay. So I'll just upload this. I'll do my other testing and then I gotta put some stuff in the heat treat and I'll be back to make another video later. Alrighty.